Number four, balance the following equations. And then we have letter F of this group. So we have Ca3PO4 two aqueous plus H3PO4 aqueous, and that will all yield or produce CaH2PO4 two. Like always, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rewrite this because I just want a little bit more room. So we have Ca3PO4 two plus H3PO4, and that will all equal Ca H2PO4 two. Like always, we love to do the chart, right? Let me just set, center this. So let's write out that chart. It's a two tiered, every time I say that, two tiered chart. Two tiered, two tiered chart, eh, whatever. <laughs> this is chem, not English. <laughs> Reactants on the left side and products on the right side. The reactants, remember, is everything on the left side of your yield. This is your starting material. Reactants are starting material. And what you produce are your products. Now, this one is going to be a little different. I, I want to try to do the chart a little bit differently here because sometimes, instead of writing down every single element, you can actually group elements together. But you can only group together polyatomics. So I'm just going to write this down here. Group your polyatomics. It will make life a little bit easier. I think this is actually the first equation in which we can group together polyatomics. All the ones that we've done in the past in this playlist, and by the way, check out the, the playlist, okay? Uh, I think there's a end screen at the end of this video that will get you to the play playlist, so just uh, check out for that. But the thing now here is that you have to remember your polyatomics. So this was like in chapter, I think, two, um, that you got introduced to memorizing your polyatomics. Now, for this example, and through tons and tons of practice, I recognize that PO4 is a polyatomic. PO4 is phosphate. So I see it over here, I see it up again here, and I see it again over here. So instead of writing P and O separately, I'm going to group my polyatomic PO4. It's going to make things much more easy. So now I have like three different things. I have calcium, Ca. I have my polyatomic PO4, and I have H. And then I have my polyatomic again, but Remember, we always write the total here. So I have Ca, calcium, I have my polyatomic PO4, and I have my H. And whatever we write on the left side, we just follow it up over here. Now we're ready to see how many we have total. So let's do the calcium and the hydrogen first, and then we'll introduce this new concept. So Ca3, I have three calciums, so that goes here. I have H3, so three hydrogens. And now let's see how many phosphates I have. PO4, there's two of my PO4s. So I have two here, and I have to group together the other PO4 on the reactant side, so plus, literally, add them. How many PO4s do we have here? right? I don't see it in parentheses and then a number. So technically I have one of them, right? There's only one PO4 here. So two plus one, that will get me a total of three PO4s, three phosphates on the reactant side. Let's try to do the same thing on the other side. So Ca, I have only one of these. So one, I have H two, but now it's in parentheses and there's a two, so I have to divvy it up. So two times two is four. And then how many phosphates? Inside there was only one, but now I have two of these. So I have two phosphates. Okay, everything here is unbalanced. It's getting a little tricky, but just take it one step at a time. Now, remember that you don't want to uh, try to balance 
things or elements or polyatomics that happen at two different compounds on one side. Because I don't know if I have to put a coefficient here to balance the phosphate. I don't know if I have to put a coefficient here to balance the phosphate. So hopefully I'll try to balance some other things to get it to, to work. So let's, let's see. Um, maybe I'll start with the calcium. Let's see. Um, do I want to start with the calcium? We can. Doesn't really matter. We might have to do some guessing and checking here because we might have to change our numbers, but we'll see. So let's see here. Let's start with the calcium. I have one on the product side. One times what will get me three? Oh, one times three. And remember, that number that you times with is going to be the coefficient in the front. So I know that I have to put a three here, a big three right there. That will tell me that I have three calcium. However, whatever you multiply this by, you have to multiply by every single thing in that compound. So all the numbers are going to change here. Remember, I had four hydrogen, right? Two times two, but now I have to times it by three. So two times two is four. Four times three is now a 12. And then you do the same thing. You had two phosphates. But now 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. But at least I got one thing balanced. So now I'm down to trying to balance the phosphates or trying to balance the hydrogens. But remember, don't try to balance things that are on two different compounds on one side if you can help it. Let's do the hydrogen instead. What can I multiply by 3 to get to 12? Oh, three times four, right? And that four is what we put in front of the compound that has the hydrogen. So I put a four here, and that's why four times three is now 12. So that balances. But now you have to be fair. You have to multiply it by this phosphate as well. Remember we said that there was one phosphate coming from this side, but 1 times 4 is now 4. So I changed that to a 4. I didn't put anything in front of here, so I still have two phosphates here, but 2 plus 4 is 6. And oop, look at that. By balancing one thing, you really balance the other thing as well, and everything is balanced here now. 3, 3, 6, 6, 12, 12. So that's the end. You have one of these, one Ca3PO42, but then you have plus four H3PO4s, and that will yield you three CaH2PO42s. And that's the end, guys. So this one is interesting, but it all stems from knowing your polyatomics. If you see polyatomics throughout your balanced equation, you can just easily group them instead of thinking about, oh, how many phosphorus do I have? How many oxygen do I have? Just group them together. All right, so hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you think. Click the like button if it helped you. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can as well. But if not, I still love you guys. I still want you to succeed and I want you to do well in your chem class. And we have math and physics videos as well. So, you know, we, we, we got you covered. And hopefully in the future, we'll have more subjects for you guys as well. All right. Um, yeah, that, that's all from me. All right. Good job, guys. I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.